Jane Fitzsimmons, good to see you this morning. I think a, a lot of people were a bit nervous yesterday when the headline was that you were stepping down, but you're really broadening your role, aren't you? Yeah, good morning, Laura. That's right. I am stepping down from the Rural Fire Service. It was a, it was a very uh, deeply personal and difficult decision to make, as, as we know the most important and necessary decisions uh, usually are. Uh, but having served 35 years with the organisation as a volunteer and as a salaried officer and of course as the last 12 or so years as the commissioner of the organisation, uh, it has really been like an extended family. Uh, it, it's played a significant and, and rewarding part of my life for such a long time. So the decision to step down and move into something else uh, was a very big one, uh, but I was humbled in recent months uh, when the Premier and the, and the Minister and the Head of the Public Service here in New South Wales approached me about a new direction, a new role that was really focusing, uh, focusing on, on helping those most at need and those that have been uh, so terribly affected and impacted uh, by disasters and emergencies. And, and it appealed to me a lot and I'm pleased to say that I'm, I've accepted that role and I'll be officially starting the new role as Commissioner of Resilience New South Wales and Deputy Secretary for Emergency Management on the 1st of May. OK, so not long at all, uh, the, just three weeks before you step into that new role. And what will it be? Of course, uh, as you've just explained, is a, it's a lot broader um, and I, I guess you'll be a lot more visible to the public. Well, the big focus uh, around this Resilience New South Wales, uh, highest priority is all around recovery. Uh, in New South Wales, indeed further afield, but certainly in New South Wales, We've seen this compounding effect of disasters impacting communities, often the same communities across New South Wales. So we've had extraordinary drought conditions, uh, uh, water deficits, moisture deficits right across the landscape uh, that were really impacting rural and regional New South Wales, farming um, uh, areas of New South Wales, agricultural sector, really devastating effect. On top of that, we then, uh, because of the conditions, had the worst ever uh, bushfire season in New South Wales' history. Uh, tragically, 25 lives lost, uh, including six firefighters, three aviators from America, and of course our three volunteers, Jeff, Andrew, uh, and Sam, who lost their life. We saw nearly, you know, just uh, just under two and a half thousand homes destroyed, uh, and now uh, in that same area, we've seen floods and storms that help break uh, part of the drought in in certain areas, and now everybody uh, is the subject of the awful effects uh, of this COVID-19 pandemic. So. So absolutely the focus is on recovery, uh, helping to rebuild, helping people to recover, make decisions about where to from here. Uh, and that's all being compounded, Laura. And, and whilst there's a big focus on the physical elements, repairing bridges, repairing roadways, repairing buildings and infrastructure, clearing blocks and helping people build homes, we're very mindful of the psychological and emotional impact that one disaster or one emergency has on people, let alone those individuals, those families, those communities that have been impacted by multiple events uh, just in the last 12 months alone. The coronavirus crisis is, of course, very different to a bushfire crisis, but the, the human toll, uh, the mental toll, as you put it, is probably no different at all. What will your role be in rebuilding after we see the back of this virus? Well, fortunately, uh, as I transition into this new role, uh, I've been part of the state's crisis committee now for a few weeks, working behind the scenes, um, uh, mo monitoring and working with uh, Commissioner Mick Fuller and the health authorities here and, and the leadership team of the Premier and the Minister, uh, uh, managing through the COVID-19 um, response here in New South Wales. But we're very mindful that but so many of the, the restrictions that are trying to to, to limit our movement, limit people's movement, uh, because at the end of the day, the only way this dreaded virus can spread uh, is through us, is through us moving around and interacting with each other. So the more we can control that, the better chance we've got of flattening that curve and ensuring our hospital systems and our medical systems are not overloaded. But in the process of, of, of implementing restrictions, there are so many serious consequences. Uh, we've got significant economic implications. We've got everything from, from employment, industry downturn, business downturn, people struggling, to, people struggling to look after their business and run their business. And then right at the very core, uh, even, those that, even those that have got jobs and are working from home, uh, we've got this, we've got this isolation, this, this restricted movement and interaction with others 
which goes against the very grain of how most of us interact. We're a very social community, we're a very social culture, and catching up and connecting and shaking hands and sharing hugs is a really important part of interacting and moving. So, so we're very mindful we've got this, this, this body of work where, where as we start lifting restrictions, uh, not in the same scale that we ratcheted down the restrictions, but what are the little things we can do to start relieving the pressure uh, to make sure we don't uh, allow this virus, virus to spread exponentially and exceed our, our medical and health capabilities, but at the same time start getting things back on track, start getting the economy back on track, start getting jobs and businesses and communities flourishing again, and most importantly, individuals, families, couples, uh, local communities, getting people out and working again. And that's, that's a really challenging, very complicated and very serious process as we start the recovery. On top of that, we've still got real recovery occurring, physical recovery occurring, from the bushfire disasters already. So there's still people in emergency or alternate accommodation contemplating what to do next, how to do it next, particularly under an environment of, of COVID-19 restrictions. Well, Shane Fitzsimmons, we wish you well. This is a, a comment, not a question. You have more empathy in your big toe than many politicians have ever had in their careers. So uh, we hope and we know that you won't lose any of that. And we wish you all the very best. And we'll be speaking to you a lot here on First Edition, we hope. Thanks, Laura. Appreciate it. And we'll stay in touch.